Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans around the world. We finally wrapped up Keith Once Upon a Time Thurman and Mario Barrios. And, you know, I got it wrong with Mario Barrios. He did not get it done. Uh, Keith Thurman wins pretty much a wide decision. I thought it was a little too wide, but I understand why they felt that way because Keith did look good. He looked better than he did against Pacquiao, for sure. It seemed like he was more confident in there. It seemed like he was not afraid to kind of toss toss some leather back and forth with Barrios. Now, I'm going to deviate just a little bit. Congrats to him for getting a win. It was a hard-fought win. And I think it looked, I think he looked really good. If you wanted to put his name in that hat, I think he's, he's earned that. Here's where I had an issue. Let's be clear here. Mario Barrios is fresh off fighting at lightweight. Keith Thurman threw everything he could think of at this dude. And this dude wasn't halfway moving. I think he wowed him maybe once, maybe twice. Other than that, Keith was landing almost at will at times, right on the chin. And Barrios just kept coming. It, it reminded me, actually, of Tank Davis and Isak Cruz, where just Tank is just landing, landing at will. And regardless of landing at will, Isak Cruz is just coming forward. That's how Barrios was. And let's be clear, too. Barrios was landing just as well as Keith was. It's just that Keith was landing that much more. He was. It wasn't even an accuracy thing. It's just Keith was a little bit busier. But Barrios was there. He was not showing up for a check. He was trying. There was one point in one round, I want to say it was round six, maybe seven, where Keith had Barrios wobbled, and I felt like he could have gone for the kill, and he didn't. He backed off, and that pissed me off. Other than that, I think it was a great showing from Keith. It's just we got to put it in perspective. This is a guy coming from flight weight, and he just took you the distance. Dude, that should not have happened. You said you were going to knock him out and said you could, and we thought you could, but yet the power didn't seem to be there. Remember, Tank stopped this guy. So how come the Tank was able to do it to this lightweight, but you, a welterweight, were not able to do it, Keith? That's the only thing that, the other thing that really got to me. It's like, well, how is this? How is this possible that this guy right here calls himself one time, at one point was able to stop dudes? Now, I mean, we got to be fair. Of course, he couldn't stop Sean. He couldn't stop Danny. But still, uh, this is a lightweight. Like, that's my whole thing. This is a lightweight, and you're getting taken the distance by a lightweight. I, I don't, he couldn't even drop Barrios. Barrios never got dropped. I don't understand that. I don't, because if you watched the fight, and I'm assuming you didn't if you're listening to this, but Keith landed everything he had on this dude right on the chin, right on the chin, straight to the body. It was He was snapping Barros' head back multiple times, and Barros just kept on coming. It actually gave me flashbacks of Thurman against Josecito because it was very similar early on where Josecito was just coming forward. Despite Thurman's every effort, it wasn't until later rounds that he started to make some damage. But here, Barrios, I think Barrios did better than Josecito outside of the fact that, of course, Josecito was able to hurt Keith that one round. And Barrios never really significantly hurt Keith. There was one situation where it was a slip fall. Other than that, even though Barrios was landing hard shots to the body, didn't seem to face Keith. Keith did look stronger. He did look stronger. He did look more than he had against Manny, in my opinion. And he fought smarter. He didn't do the lean back craft that he did. That got him dropped against Manny. So he, he, he certainly had improved his game. And he looked like he was, he was hungry again. I just, I question why it was he's not able to stop a lightweight. That, that's what worries me. Because, again, you got to think about 147. Let's look who we got left. Jordanius Ugas, okay. The Keith Thurman I saw in the ring t tonight, I think he goes to the distance with Jordanius Ugas. And he possibly wins that one, okay, just based on the Keith I saw. He doesn't beat Spence. There, there's no, no, I'm sorry. This Keith does not beat Spence because Spence is not going to take the shots that Barrios took. He's not going to take those shots. Spence is deceptively brilliant on the defensive. So this Keith really depended on his defense, which was good, but that's against Mario Barrios. And then his ability to land shots primarily upstairs. They were good, but again, it's against Mario Barros. In both situations, it's a lightweight. The, the level of Errol Spence I saw against Danny Swift, I'm sorry. I see that as an 8-4 decision for Errol Spence. I don't see that Keith has a chance against Spence, at least not with what I saw. Now, of course, this is qualified as a get back for Keith, right? But he said he wants to go right to a champion right after that. I don't see he beat Spence. With Crawford, it's a bit different because I don't even, I see Keith would have to find a totally different style to fight Crawford. He's not going to be able to do what he just did 
against Terrence Crawford. No way, no how. Because if he tried to do that stuff, Crawford's going to swarm the hell out of him, drop him at least twice, and possibly stop him too, just like he stopped Porter. I don't know. He'd have to fight a totally different style because that style is not going to work against Crawford. And anybody who knows me knows I don't fully rate Crawford. I do give him credit for being Porter, but we have to acknowledge that Kenny Porter got in the way, and we don't know what that would have been without his interference. So stylistically, did he look good? Yes. Do I think he beats guys like Boots Ennis? Absolutely. Do I think he beats guys like Virgil Ortiz? Absolutely. Do I think he beats guys like Blair the Flair? Absolutely. Once you start stepping up, though, I think it's a little harder sell. I do think he beats Ugas. I've always felt he beat Ugas, especially now. This style he had right here, I think, is is kryptonite for Jordanius Ugas. Of course, Spence is going to presumably fight Ugas first. That means he's got pretty much Spence and Crawford in front of him. I don't think Keith beats either one of them, and that's assuming he gets that fight because we know the Spence ain't going to fight him without a belt. So it's an interesting dynamic. I'm just saying that from me, I'm, I want to be clear. I'm not hating on Keith Thurman. He looked good, but we have to acknowledge who he looked good against. He looked good against a lightweight that he couldn't drop and couldn't stop. I'm sorry. That is troubling to me. It's troubling. It reminds me, Manny goes the distance with a lightweight. That's Chris Algieri and Brandon Rios, actually, by the way. Goes the distance with lightweights, right? But at least Man Manny couldn't drop Brandon Rios. I don't recall. I don't think he did. But he did drop Chris Algieri, but he couldn't stop either guy. But yet here with Keith, he couldn't even stop the freaking light. He couldn't even drop, much less stop the freaking lightweight. I'm Maybe I'm overstating it, but to me, that's concerning. For somebody that wants to be at the top, upper echelon, there should have been something there. I, I don't know why there wasn't anything there. And people will come back and they'll say, well, Spence didn't doubt Mikey. Deep, deep, deep. Spence and Mikey, that's a different dynamic because with Mikey Garcia, Mikey didn't have try. Let's be honest. He didn't have try. Barrios tried. Barrios came at Keith. If if Mikey had come at Spence the way Barrios went at Thurman, Mikey would have got stopped. Mikey didn't have try. He fought tentative. So Spence is like, cool, I'll just stay back and jab the hell out of you at range and watch you fist pump it at any of round. So that wasn't Spence shouldn't have to the A side doesn't have to go after the B side. The B side should go after the A side. Mikey didn't do that. So here the B side was actively going against Keith. He, Mar Mario Barrios was trying to win. He did a very good showing. I was very impressed with Mario Barrios. I think Mario Barrios is a good contender at 147. He seemed to come into the weight very well. I was I was ecstatic seeing him perform and his size. He looked like he fit 147. I would love to see, honestly, I'd love to see Mario Barrios versus Virgil Ortiz. To me, that's a hell of a fight. I want to see that dude. But at summary, I'm not hating on Keith once upon a time Thurman. I thought he looked great in this fight against that opponent, that kind of opponent that was coming at him, who is a, essentially a lightweight coming into the division. He stylistically looked good, but he couldn't drop him and he couldn't stop him. And that concerns me. Did he bloody him? Yeah, that's cool. Was he landing almost at will? Yes, that's good. Was he brilliant in the way he boxed in his defense? Absolutely. I just, you couldn't drop or stop a lightweight. At, at minimum, get one drop on the dude if you couldn't do anything else. So that was my disappointment. In other updates, just a real quick. Luis Neri, who everybody seems to call a pound-for-pound -pound fighter, gets taken to a split decision. I Listen, I'm not going to underrate his opponent. I'm not saying his opponent's a bum. But again, if you're going to call a guy a pound-for-pound -pound fighter, you shouldn't be getting taken to split decisions. I'm sorry. It's not acceptable. I'm sorry. I will not accept that. Leo Santa Cruz gets essentially a blowout. I don't agree with the scorecards, basically giving them all 10 rounds. I don't agree with that at all because I think the dude, Caraba Hall, I believe was in there with, was giving him the business in certain rounds. I, I didn't see this blowout. He looked good, but I didn't see this blowout that everybody else saw. And then Abel Ramos looked decent, but not great. He Then I believe he got upset too. Jesse Ramos, though, looked amazing. So we did have an interesting night of fights. We did have an interesting night of boxing. And I got predictions wrong. I, I expected Mario Barros to pull it out. He looked like he basically won by virtue of taking Keith Thurman the distance. A lightweight taking this welterweight the distance. But he didn't get his hand raised at the end of the day. Like I thought he might. I thought he had a chance to do it. But I was cheering for Keith. I was cheering for him to get the win. He got the win. But now I'm disappointed at the fact he couldn't drop or stop this lightweight when Tank Davis was able to stop that same lightweight. So I don't I don't even know, man. I 
maybe it's just his get back, but he looked great. It wasn't like he, he didn't look like he had any sort of rough edges or anything else. He didn't look like he was coming off a layoff at all. He just looked like it looked like he just didn't have the power he once had. He even gave himself basically a C plus B minus grade. I'd put it about that. Yeah. He didn't look, I thought he looked brilliant, but he didn't, he didn't excite, right? The crowd was behind him. It was a hot crowd. The biggest thing about the pay-per-view, of course, is their cam they had some ghetto camera work. I don't know if that was just some random dude or girl with their cell phone or something, but there's periods where the camera's just going all kinds of crazy. They couldn't focus on Jimmy Lennon Jr. They had camera or uh, mic workers in the shot. It it wasn't it was not a pay-per-view level production. I don't know if that's Fox's fault or PBC's fault, but I don't know what the hell was going on. All I know is it was a terrible production and that harmed it a little bit. Because you're going to the camera and you're seeing whoever's holding the camera climbing in the freaking ring while they're focusing the camera and moving the camera to the crowd and all this. One shot where they're supposed to be focusing on the fighter and they're focusing on some dude in the crowd holding up an Azteca fucking towel. I, I don't. Anyhow. And then the entrances. Like the, uh, Keith's entrance, he had a guy singing. The guy singing was a very good singer, but there's no music. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I, I don't. This is the first time I recall an acapella entrance. But it seemed ghetto. It didn't seem like the, I think it said seventy four ninety five for this crap. I didn't pay that, but I'm saying this didn't feel like a pay-per-view. It felt like, you know, HBO after dark or something. It did not feel like a pay-per-view. It felt like people got ripped off. If you were watching the broadcast and they broadcast it on YouTube, it felt like you got ripped off for the way that the production came off. It came off like garbage. I don't know how it came across on Fox, but on YouTube, it came across like crap. That may have been, I don't know, the venue and some limitations of the camera because I know that the Grand had some limitations on the camera, but normally it's not been a problem with the boxing site. So unless they're locking stuff down, I'm not sure. All I know is on my summary, and you, if you get a chance to see the fight, I do think it's a good fight to watch. It's not going to go down in history as one of the greats or anything, but I think it was a good fight. It showcased really good skills from both sides. Both Keith and Barrio showed up. And they entertained the fans. I think it was a good showing. I don't think there was a single clinch the whole night. Like, it was a really good fight. Better than any of Keith's other recent fights other than Pacquiao, really. And arguably, Keith performed better here than he did against Pacquiao. Barrios, I think he was a step lower than he performed against Tank. I think he stepped up more against Tank than he did against Keith. But Barrios did come to fight. He didn't come for a check. It didn't disappoint that main event. And really, the undercard was pretty decent, too. So... That's it. Keith, one time Thurman. He is back and he got his win on his get back fight. He did look good. He didn't get hurt. You know, his face is banged up. That's always. But he didn't get overtly hurt. It did seem like he was healthy and didn't seem like the lesser fighter he was when he fought Manny Pacquiao. If you get the chance to check out the fight, please do. My only disappointment, like I said, once again, is you can't drop or stop a lightweight. I, I don't know what to think about that if you're going to try to go against Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford.